Hello and welcome to FDA's SBI webinar titled OTC Monograph Drug User Fee Program, Understanding Fiscal Year 2021 User Fees. Today, three presenters from CEDARS Office of Management, Division of User Fee Management will present. Captain Teresa Ramson, Deputy Director, Captain Matt Brancasio, Branch Chief, Lieutenant Commander Tramara Dam, OMUFA Program Manager. Today, we will cover a various amount of topics, including what is OMUFA, registration and listing, OMUFA user fee types, and fiscal year 2021 key dates, OMUFA fiscal year 2021 target revenue and fee rates, penalties for failure to pay fees, fee payment process, refund eligibility, and helpful resources. But first, before we get started, we'd like to do a poll question. What is your knowledge and experience regarding the OMUFA user fee program? Do you consider yourself an expert on OMUFA user fees and understand the OMUFA user fee structure and fee payment process? Or do you have limited knowledge of OMUFA user fees? And are you aware that there may be fees associated with OTC monograph drug activities? Lastly, do you have no knowledge of OMUFA user fees and are not aware of any fees associated with OTC monograph drug activities? Activities. What is a MUFA? The Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, or CARES Act, was enacted on March 27, 2020. The CARES Act included an important legislative initiative that reforms and modernizes the way OTC monograph drugs are regulated in the United States. The CARES Act added Section 744L and 744M of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, or the FDNC Act, authorizing a new user fee program dedicated to the over-the-counter monograph drug activities. We refer to this OTC user fee program as the OT Over-the-Counter Monograph Drug User Fee Program, or AMUFA. So what is the AMUFA user fee program? AMUFA is modeled after the Successful Prescription Drug User Fee Act, or PDUFA. AMUFA is a congressionally authorized program of industry paid fees to help fund FDA's regulatory activities for OTC monograph drugs. Congress's authorization of the AMUFA program was informed by an FDA industry agreement embodied in a commitment letter under which FDA agreed to adhere to performance goals, including to review submissions within specific timeframes. AMUFA fees will support FDA's OTC monograph drug activities, which are detailed in Section 744L6 of the FDNC Act, and include various FDA activities associated with OTC monograph drugs and inspections of facilities associated with such products. So what are OTC monograph drugs? Per Section 744L5 of the FDNC Act, an OTC monograph drug is a non-prescription drug without an approved new drug application, which is governed by the provisions of Section 505G of the FDNC Act. Which leads us to OTC monograph drug facilities. An OTC monograph drug facility also referred to in this presentation as an MDF, is a foreign or domestic business or other entity that, in addition to meeting other criteria, is engaged in manufacturing or processing the finished dosage form of an OTC monograph drug, Section 744L10 of the FDNC Act, with the caveats described on the next slide. The FDNC Act's AMUFA provisions detail the definition of OTC monograph drug facilities and the requirements for FDA Establishment Identifiers, or FEI. A facility's FEI is also needed during the submission of the cover sheet within FDA's user fee system. Section 744L10 Cap A of the FDNC Act states, generally, an OTC monograph drug facility means a foreign or domestic business that is, under one management, at one geographic location or address, engaged in manufacturing or processing the finished dosage form of an OTC monograph drug includes a finished dosage form manufacturer facility in a contractual relationship with the sponsor of one or more OTC monograph drugs to manufacture or process such drugs, and does not include a business or other entity whose only manufacturing or processing activities are the production of clinical research supplies, testing, 
or placement of outer packaging over drug products in final packaged form, such as for creating multipacks. Further, Section 744L10 Cat B of the FTNC Act states, separate buildings or locations within close proximity are considered to be at one geographic location or address if the activities conducted in such buildings or locations are closely related to the same business enterprise, under the supervision of the same local management, and are under a single FEI and capable of being inspected by the FDA during a single inspection. Now let's discuss OTC contract manufacturing organizations. A contract manufacturing organization facility, also referred to as a CMO, is an OTC monograph drug facility where neither the owner nor any affiliate of the owner or facility sells the OTC monograph drug product produced at such facility directly to wholesalers, retailers, or consumers in the United States. This is in section 744L2 of the FDNC Act. It's important to note that CMOs pay two thirds of the amount of the fee paid by an MDF. A facility status as an MDF or a CMO, as defined in our presentation, is derived from the registration and listing. All facilities are required to review and update registration within FDA's Electronic Drug Registration and Listing System, or EDIRLIS, using Current Structured Product Labeling, or SPL, to accurately describe the facility's operations. Registering the facility using the appropriate SPL codes will help FDA determine whether the facility is subject to applicable OMUVA facility fees. Entities may refer to the eDuralist SPL webpage for relevant SPL codes. In March 2017, FDA updated the SPL business operation qualifiers for facilities that manufacture OTC monograph drug products. The updated codes are shown on the screen are as follows. Ending in 708, manufactures human OTC drug products produced under a monograph. Ending in 709, manufactures human OTC drug products produced under an approved drug application. Ending in 710, manufactures human OTC drug products not produced under an approved drug application or under a monograph. In March 2020, FDA added an SPL business operation qualifier for facilities that qualify as an OTC CMO. That code, ending in 729, reads contract manufacturing for human OTC drug products produced under a monograph. Further, on May 4th, 2021, this e durlist functionality was made available to those facilities with the business operations of analysis, pack, label, repack, and relabel. I will now hand over the presentation to my colleague, Captain Teresa Ramson, to discuss specific user fees for AMUFA. Hello, I'm Captain Teresa Ramson, and I will be going over the AMUFA user fee types and fiscal year 2021 key dates. As mentioned earlier in our presentation, the CARES Act added Section 744L and 744M to the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, which authorizes FDA to collect OMUFA user fees for fiscal year 2021 through fiscal year 2025. There are two OMUFA user fee types. There's facility fees and there's OTC monograph order request fee, which is also referred to as OMUFA fee. AMUFA facility fees is assessed and due annually for those qualifying facilities that engage in the manufacturing or processing of the finished dosage form of an OTC monograph drug. A qualifying facility that is liable for the fiscal year 2021 facility fee will be assessed either an MDF or a CMO fee. The fee rates vary depends on your facility's business operation and your facility registration status within FDA's EDERS. Please refer to our earlier slides of our presentations for more information on an MDF versus a CMO. A mover facility fee assessment. Any person that owns a facility that identifies as an OTC monograph facility including contract manufacturing organizations facilities on December 31st of the fiscal year or at any time during the preceding 12-month period is required to pay a facility fee for that fiscal year. What does this mean? This means that for fiscal year 2021, if a facility is identified as an OTC monograph facilities in EDERS at any time from January 1, 2020 
Through December 31st, 2020, the facility will be assessed the fiscal year 2021 mover facility fee. Facilities that are not a mover fee liable. A facility that is not considered a mover fee liable if the facility manufactures human OTC drug products produced under an approved drug application, such as a new drug application or NDA. If the facility manufactures human OTC drug products that are neither produced under an approved drug application, nor are they produced under a monograph, such as homeopathic over-the-counter product. If the facilities have ceased all activities related to OTC monograph drugs prior to December 31st of the year immediately preceding the applicable fiscal year and have updated their EDERS registration to reflect this change. For fiscal year 2021, the date to cease all activities related to OTC monograph drugs and update the registration to reflect this change in order to not be assessed the OMUFA FY 2021 facility fees was December 31, 2019. Lastly, facilities that only manufactures active pharmaceutical ingredient API for further use in the manufacturing or processing of the finished dosage form of an OTC monograph drug product is also would not be considered an AMUFA fee liable facility. In addition, facilities that engage in the following activities are not subject to the facility fees for fiscal year 2021. Facility fees that manufacture or process the finished dosage form only for the production of clinical research supplies or testing. Facilities hold only manufacturing or processing activities or the placement of outer packaging or packages containing multiple products for such purposes as creating multi-packs when each monograph drug product contained within the over-packaging is already in a final package form prior to the placement of the outer over-packaging. This slide pertains to hand sanitizers manufacturers. According to the Federal Register Notice issued by HHS on January 12, 2021, if your facility registered in response to the COVID-19 public health emergency and the facility only produce hand sanitizer products during this public health emergency period, your facility would not be assessed an AMUFA fiscal year 2021 fee. Please note that FDA further explained the term hand sanitizer for AMUFA use of fee purposes in our March 26, 2021 Federal Register Notice. The term hand sanitizer products refers to OTC monograph drug products intended for use without water as antiseptic hand rubs or antiseptic hand wipes, including products manufactured or prepared consistent with the agency's temporary policy for preparation of certain alcohol-based hand sanitizer products during the public health emergency COVID-19 guidance for industry. Again, this slide reiterates that FDA would not assess a move for facility fees upon those firms that first registered with FDA on or after January 27, 2020, the date of the declarations of the COVID-19 public health emergency, solely for the purposes of manufacturing hand sanitizer products during the PHE. If a company was manufacturing hand sanitizers prior to this date, the fiscal year 2021 facility fees would apply and be assessed. If a company were to manufacture hand sanitizer in addition to other OTC monograph drugs, then the fiscal year 2021 facility fees would apply and be assessed. Please note that hand sanitizer manufacturers not subject to the OMUFA facility fees are still subject to other applicable FDA requirements. The agency will continue to use its regulatory compliance and enforcement tools to protect consumers, including from potentially dangerous or support hand sanitizers. We will now discuss the other OMUFA use fee type, the OMUR fee. An OMUR is an OTC monograph order request for an administrative order with respect to an OTC monograph drug, which is submitted under Section 505 GB5 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. In other words, an OMUR is a request to add, remove, or change a generally recognized as safe and effective condition for an OTC drug monograph. And there are two types of OMURs, 
There's tier one or more, and there's tier two or more. This slide depicts the differences between a tier one or more versus a tier two or more. A tier one or more is any or more not determined to be a tier two or more. For example, or more is to include additions of a new ingredient to a monograph that already has one or more ingredients that have been found to be grassy. A new indication to a monograph that already has one or more ingredients that have been found to be grassy, and the new indications applies to one or more of the grassy ingredients. New monograph therapeutic category. Each ingredient proposed for the new therapeutic category will be a separate or more. A tier two or more may be involved in the reordering or existing information in the drug fact label. Addition of information to the other information sections of the drug fact label. Modification to the directions of for use sections of the drug fact label, consistent with the minor dosage form change. Standardizations of the concentrations or dose of a specific finalized ingredient within a particular finalized monograph. Change to the ingredient nomenclature to align with the nomenclature of standard setting organizations and the addition of an interchangeable term. Unlike facility fees, OMOR fees are due on the date of the submissions of the OMOR, except for OMORs that request certain safety-related changes. Also, unlike facility fees, OMOR fees are not included in the OMOFA target revenue calculation. And there are two tiers of OMOR fees. There's tier one or more fees, and there's tier two or more fees. There are a few exceptions to the more fee. A no more fee would not be assessed if the more seeks to make certain safety changes with respect to an OTC monograph drug. Specifically, no fees will be assessed if FDA finds that the more seeks to change the drug facts labeling of an OTC monograph drug in a way that would add or strengthen a contraindication, warning, or precaution, a statement about risk associated with misuse or abuse, or an instruction about dosage and administration that is intended to increase the safe use of the OCC monograph drug. Thank you, and this concludes my part of the presentation. I will now hand over the presentation to my colleague, Lieutenant Commander Tamara Dam, to discuss specific fee target revenue and fee rates for fiscal year 2021. Now that you have learned the OMUFA background, update and registration and listing, OMUFA user fee types. For the remaining of the presentations, I'm going to discuss the OMUFA fiscal year 2021 target revenue and fee rates, penalties for failure to pay fees, fee payment process, and finally, refund eligibility. The fiscal year 2021 OMUFA target revenue for facility fees is 23,269,000, rounded to the nearest thousand. The OMUFA facility fee is due 45 calendar days after publication of fiscal year 2021 OMUFA Federal Register Notice which was published on March 26, 2021. The OMUFA facility fee for fiscal year 2021 was due on May 10, 2021, which is a few weeks ago. That is 45 days after the publications of the FRN. Fee schedule for fiscal year 2021 include facility fee rate, and OMAR fee rate. The facility fee rate for MDF is 20322 and for CMO is 13548 A CMO pays two-thirds of the amount of the fee paid by an MDF. For OMAR fee rate, for Tier 1, 500000 and for Tiers 2, 100000 as stated earlier, fee for OMARs are due on the day of submissions of the OMAR. An OMAR fee is generally assessed to each person who submits an OMAR to FDA for review.
there are penalties for failure to pay fee. For OMR fee, if a person owns fees fails to remit the appropriate payment when submitting an OMR, that OMR shall be considered incomplete and shall not be accepted for filing. For facility fee, if facility does not pay the annual facility fee within 20 calendar days of the due date, FDA will place the facility on a publicly available arrear list. And all OTC monograph drug products produced at that facility or containing ingredients manufactured at that facility shall be deemed misbranded. Furthermore, OMARs will not be accepted from person or company own fee in arrears from either failure to pay the OMAR or facility fee and any meeting requests from personal company own fee will be denied or canceled. Fee payment process. To submit payment to fulfill your fiscal year 2021 OMUFA facility fee obligations, you can access the FDA user fee system to create an OMUFA facility fee cover sheet for your facility. You can utilize the step-by-step -step instructions included on the web page. You will need to provide specific information for each fee type, such as the FEI number of the facility on the cover sheet. You will then pay the appropriate fees after completions of the cover sheet. Please note that payment must be made in U.S. currency from a U.S. bank by using pay.gov, using an automated clearinghouse electronic check, also known as e-check. You can also use a credit card payment with a limit amount of under 25000 You can also wire transfer using your bank account. Please know that there may be a fee that your bank chart for a wire transfer. Therefore, you must take into account of the bank wire transfer plus the fee on the cover sheet so that you include all payment to ensure fees are fully paid. Please refer to Section 6 Fee Payments Options and Procedures in the Federal Register Notice issued on March 26, 2021 for more details on fee requirements and payment options and procedures. Who is entitled to a refund? If an OMAR is refused for filing or withdrawn before being accepted or refused for filing, FDA will refund 75%. Additionally, the difference in OMAR fees shall be refunded if FDA reclassify the OMAR from a Tier 1 request to a Tier 2 request. In these situations, FDA do not require a written refund request to be submitted. In situation where overpayments or payments made in error to qualify for the return of a fee, a person or company shall submit a written request to FDA requesting the return of the fee paid. Refunds for overpayments or payment made in error must be requested in writing within 180 calendar days of payment. Please know that if a written request is not made within 180 calendar days, no return of fee is permitted. You must submit a written request and a complete form FDA 3913 and
submit it to the divisions of user fee management at Cedar Collections at fda.hhs.gov. In a case where if you are assessed on fiscal year 2021 OMUFA facility fee and believe your facility is not on OTC monograph drug facility as described in the FDA March 26, 2021 Federal Register Notice, please contact Cedar Collections at fda.hhs.gov. Before we wrap up the presentations, I'd like to quickly summarize the main takeaway points. The MUFA statutory background under the CARE Act added Section 744L and 744M of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, authorizing a new use of fee program, the MUFA. And the importance of updating the registrations and listing using the current structure product labeling code to accurately describe your facility operations. The annual facility fee for DMF is 20322 and for CMO is 13548 And for OMAR fee rate for Tier 1 is 500000 and Tier 2 is 100000 Under OMAR fee, you would not be subject to an OMAR fee unless you submit an OMAR to the FDA for review. And also there are penalties for failure to pay fee. Finally, fee payment process. You can access the Food and Drug Administration's user fee system to create an OMUFA facility fee cover sheet. You must pay by a U.S. currency and use a U.S. bank. The acceptable payment types are electronic check, a credit card, or wire transfer. If you would like more information, here is a list of useful resources and websites. And that brings us to the end of the presentations. We'd like to thank you for your time and attention today. Now let us move on to challenge questions, and then we will take any question you may have afterwards. Challenge question number one, the amount of a CMO facility fee is A, one half of the amount of fee paid by an OTC MDF. B, there is no difference in fees between OTC CMO and OTC DMFs. C, one-third of the amount of fee paid by an OTC MDF. D, two-thirds of the amount of fee paid by an OTC MDF. Please take a few seconds to answer this question. The correct answer is D, two-thirds of the amount of fee paid by an OTC MDF. Challenge question number two. How can I pay my OMUFA facility fee? A, automated clearing house electronic check, e-check. B, credit card. C, carrier pigeon. D, wire transfer. E, written mail-in check. F, A, B, and D. G, A, B, D, and E. Please take a few seconds to answer the questions. Thank you for those great presentations. Well, now the correct answer is Q &A F. Session. Include you haven't had a chance to any a questions automated clearing house and electronic check. Please do so now.
B, we'll credit card, many questions as and D, why a transfer. Some questions coming in right now. Now, group of we will take any will questions that you may have. Captain Brancasio. And here's the first question. What if someone starts the ethyl alcohol hand sanitizer manufacturing business now for, COVID, for the COVID-19 pandemic period? Will they be charged the fee next year? As I would probably push someone to the January 12, 2021 HHS FRN that does state once the COVID-19 public health emergency period is over, a fee, a fee may be assessed for facilities that continue to produce hand sanitizers. I would emphasize people to make sure they join our AMUFA listserv to stay up to date on those current activities regarding AMUFA and those developments. Thank you for responding to that question. We have another question from Captain Brent Casio, and here's the question. If one company started the manufacturing of hand sanitizers after January the 27th, 2020, to support the public health emergency, but it also started man the manufacturing of antibacterial hand soaps to support the public health emergency also, will this company be required to pay a move of fees. For this answer, I would refer to the FDA's March 26, 2021 FRN that specifically states, hand sanitizer is commonly referred to consumer antiseptic drugs. However, because the HHS notice referred to persons that entered the OTC drug market to supply hand sanitizer products in response to COVID-19 PHE, we're using the same terminology, so that means hand sanitizer products, to refer to OTC monograph drug products intended for use without water as antiseptic hand rubs or antiseptic hand wipes by consumers or healthcare personnel. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We're having a little bit of reception um, difficulty on our end. We're going to move to our next presenter, Captain Ramson, for the next few questions and give Captain Brancasio an opportunity to uh, look at some um, connectivity issues. And here is the next question for Captain Ramson, and here it is. Regarding slides 14 and 15, in the exemption from AMOFA fees, would a CMO facility that has ceased all activities related to OTC monograph drugs prior to December 31st, 2019, but did not update its EDRLS listing to reflect the change until later in 2020, still be liable for fiscal year 2021 AMUFA facility fees? Thank you for that question. So if your facility have ceased all activities related to OTC monograph drugs, uh, activities prior to December 31 of 2019, but did not update the EDA's list to reflect this change until later in 2020, please send us an email at cedarcollections at fda.hhs.gov so that we can review your specific record and any manufacturing activities before we determine your fee liable um, status. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. The next question is also for Captain Ramson, and here's the question. If I register as an OTC monograph facility in June 2021, will I be required to pay the FY 2021 AMUFA facility fee? So the OTC monograph related activities period for which a facility will be assessed the fiscal year 2021 fee is from January 1, 2020 through December 2020. So if your facilities um, register in June of 2021, that is outside of the fiscal year 2021 OMUFA facility fee um, assessment period you will be um, due an FY2022 AMUFA facility fee. 
Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have a next question for Captain Ramson. Is the FDA currently accepting OMOR applications? Yes, the FDA is currently accepting um, OMOR applications, and we uh, were authorized to accept OMOR in FY 2021. So that was October 1st, 2020. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We've got a couple more questions for Captain Ramson, and here's the next one. Where is the arrears list located? So the arrears, the arrears list will be published on our AMUFA website under the use of fees list tab. Uh, we have not posted this arrears list yet, but we anticipate that um, in the next few weeks, this arrears list will be posted, and you can find that list there under our AMUFA website under the use of fee list tab. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have one more question for Captain Ramson, and, here, and here's the last question in this round. We're having an issue with payment methods. Is there a way to make payments other than credit card, because our credit card limits are not matching with the requested limit. There's an issue that we could not solve and appreciate you providing any solution that you have. I would defer this question to my program manager, um, Tamara. Could you take this question? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Um, so basically, um, as mentioned earlier in the presentations, uh, we do take three types of payment. You can log into pay.gov and pay through e-checks or use your credit card. You can also wire transfer. And if these three options, um, if you have not, uh, if you're unable to use these three options or have difficulty, um, you can also send us an email, um, you know, when you are trying to pay a fee um, by using or sending the information to Cedar Collections at fda.hhs.gov and we can be, should be able to assist you um, at that time. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We're gonna move back to Captain Brancasio and uh, for a few more questions. And here's the next question for Captain Brancasio. Do facilities registered as a relabeler need to pay the fees? Well, as described in our March 26th FRN, um, when within 21 CFR 207.1, the term manufacturer means each step in the manufacture, preparation, propagation, compounding, or processing of a drug. And indicating the term manufacture, preparation, propagation, compounding, or processing, as used in Section 510 of the FDNC, does include relabeling, repackaging, and salvaging activities. If you are still unsure about your facility's operations as a repackager or relabeler, and whether it meets the definition of fee liable, please email cedarcollections at fda.hhs.gov so we may assist you. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. The next question for Captain Brancasio. Are there any amendments to be considered for reduced facility fee when a foreign facility's total gross annual sales into the U.S. is less than 10K? All companies pay the same applicable fee, whether that's facility and or OMOR, regardless of size. In addition, there is no statutory authority under AMUFA for any waiver or reduction of facility fees based on business size or business revenue. All facilities are liable for the same facility fee amount as calculated under Section 744 MC, except for those contract manufacturing facilities, which are assessed a two-thirds of the facility fee. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have one more question for Captain Brancasio in this round. And here's the question. 
what if a facility is both an OTC and an OTC contract facility? Are they required to pay both AMUFA facility fees? If a facility has the business operations of both a monograph drug facility or MDF and a contract manufacturing organization or CMO, that facility would only be liable for the MDF or monograph drug facility fee. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. The next group of questions will be uh, directed to uh, Commander Dam. And here is the first question. One second. I'm waiting on my uh, my um, my document to populate. It'll be just a moment here. All right. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm going. Here we go. I'm sorry. We're going to move back to uh, uh, Captain Ramson. I do apologize for that. And here is the, um, the question for Captain Ramson. Here's the question. When will the AMUFA 2022 be published? Uh, thank you. So unfortunately, we can't comment on when the FY 2022 UCP um, rate would be uh, pu published for AMUFA. We are still in the process of, as you, as you know, uh, collecting the fee for the fiscal year 2021. So we anticipate that once the collections for fiscal year 2021 is completed, then we'll start working on um, our data for the fiscal year 2022 and publish this rate, um, hopefully sometimes after fiscal year 2022 has started. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. And the next question for Captain Ramson, and here's the question. Is there a financial penalty for not paying the AMUFA facility fee following the 20-day calendar period? And also, is there a reduced fee applicable to companies based on their company size or revenue generated in a given fiscal year? So uh, I'll take the first part of the question. Um, please know that an unpaid invoice is an obligation to the U.S. government, and the fail failure to pay the fee um, may result in collection activities by the government pursuant to the applicable laws. And um, could you repeat the second part of the questions? And I think Captain Von Casio can probably take that. And uh, this is the second part of that question, and here it is. Are there any reduced fees applicable to companies based on their company size or revenue generated in a given fiscal year? I would refer to my earlier um, question and answer regarding um, similar for applicable fee regardless of size. There is no statutory authority under MUFA for any waiver or reduction of facility fees based on either business size or business revenue. All facilities are liable for the same facility fee amount as calculated under Section 744MC, except for those contracting manufacturing facilities, which are assessed two-thirds of the MDF fee. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have another question for Captain Brancasio, and here's the question. Can we use a foreign bank credit card to pay the fees? As described in our March 26, 2021 FDA FRN 
Payments must be made using U.S. currency from a U.S. bank account or with a U.S. credit card. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have another question for Captain Brancasio. How do I know if I'm an MDF or a CMO? Again, I would refer to our March 26, 2021 FDA FRN. In the first section under background, it has four bullets, two of which are the definitions. In short, based on those definitions in that FRN, you are an MDF if you or your partners or affiliates sell directly to a wholesaler, retailer, or consumer. You are a CMO if your facility or your facility's partners or affiliates sell to another entity who then sells to wholesalers, retailers, or consumers. Thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have time for just a couple more questions, and these questions will be directed to Commander Dam. And here's the first question. I received the FDA's email on May 21st, 2021, saying I was a monograph drug facility, but my business operations met the definition of a contract manufacturing organization as described in the FRN. What do I do? Uh, thank you. Um, so in that email, the instructions uh, indicated that you should first update your electronic drug registration and listing system account uh, to the proper business operation qualifier of a contract manufacturing for human over-the-counter drug products produced under a monograph, uh, code C170729, and then notify uh, the agency uh, via email address Cedar Collections at fda.hhs.gov of the update. Um, as the due date has already uh, passed, uh, we would suggest that you simultaneously continue with the payment portion, uh, describe it in that email to remove your facility from the arrear list as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. We have a couple more questions, and the last couple of questions will go to Commander Dam. And here's the next question. What is an FDA establishment identification number? An um, FDA establishment identification num number, um, or um, FEI, is a unique identifier issued by FDA to track inspections of the regulated establishment or facility. Um, FEI numbers are also used to track O2C facility fee payment. Uh, be, please note that an FEI number is different uh, from a central file number and federal tax identification number. Additionally, as mentioned in this presentation, an FEI is required during the cover sheet recreation process. Uh, thank you. Thank you for responding to that question. Looks like we have time for just one more question and this will be for Commander Dam and here's the question. How do I request a formal meeting to discuss an OMOR submission with FDA? Uh, thank you, yes. Um, so if you wish to speak to the FDA regarding over-the-counter monograph order request or OMARs, uh, please submit those meeting requests to a monograph uh, with a capital M, a dash meeting, also capital M, dash request at fda.hs.gov. I'm going to repeat myself again. Monograph dash meeting dash request at fda.hs.gov. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for questions. That we want to have a huge thank you to all of our presenters for your very formative and timely talk and also for responding to numerous questions that came in. We do have a few closing reminders.